Now check this out. Researchers discover vitamin B3, also known as niacin byproduct linked to heart attacks and stroke. See, your body uses vitamin B3, known as niacin, to make a helper molecule called NAD+, that actually powers cell energy production. And we get niacin through foods like meat and leafy greens or even supplements. And sometimes extra niacin changes into leftovers uh, called 4PY with a chemical called a methyl that attaches. And too much circulating 4PY from supplements or other got some scientists freaking worried. As they found people with 4PY blood levels over twice as high had 65% more heart attacks and strokes over the years and injecting mice with 4PY revealed signs of artery inflammation. Not good. An expert now fret nice and supplements fueling 4PY problem in humans. See, higher than normal niacin doses tripled or even quadrupled 4PY byproducts in studies, sailing it into concerning range. A recommendation 250 milligram doses only multiplied 4PY slightly within safe limits. So that said, don't you think that governments should remove mandatory niacin added to flour to avoid overexposure risks? And what about the pharmaceutical industry that tried to control niacin over the years by making niacinol, nicor, niacepan, nicotinex, and slow niacin? They actually tried making these pharmaceutical products to control cholesterol, but yet they failed as niacin as a dietary supplement is very cheap to obtain without prescription. So continue watching and let's break it even further. Niacin is an important B vitamin that helps produce NAD+, which powers energy production in cells. It is found in foods like meat, fish, nuts, legumes, and green vegetables. The body is capable of making all the niacin it needs on its own if adequate tryptophan, which is an amino acid, is obtained through high protein foods. Now, if someone takes high dose of niacin supplements, the excess gets broken down and expelled from the body. As, and as part of this breakdown process, some gets converted into compounds called methylated pyridines like 4PY and 2PY. And experts or maybe pharma sponsors now recommend limiting niacin supplements to 250 milligrams per day. This is enough for balancing deficiencies without generating concerning levels of 4PY buildup over time that may impact heart health. So, in essence, 4PY is a metabolite created when the body breaks down and gets rid of surplus niacin intake from supplements. And early evidence suggests keeping 4PY levels in check is wise for long-term health. Now, do keep in mind, niacin was discovered in 1937. That's 87 years of heavily used for the support of healthy cholesterol levels without any oxidization. And this have been attempted numerous times to be controlled by pharmaceuticals, but yet unable to patent the design and failed numerous times. So that said, in 87 years of niacin usage by the public, only one death occurred due to overconsumption of niacin. So at this time, there is no standard clinical blood test available to check 4PY levels. Detecting and measuring 4PY requires specialized methods and analysis not typically found in commercial test offering. So while future commercial testing may be possible, currently 4PY analysis would have to be done through research labs with expertise in examining these metabolites using mass spectrometers. And the study that found an association between higher 4PY levels and increased cardiovascular risk, specifically performed a liquid chromatography mass spectrometry to measure 4PY in the blood of participants. See, this requires equipment, chemical methods, and expertise not typically employed in routine blood panels ordered through general practitioners or even clinics. And testing for levels of B3 vitamins in the blood does exist through standard commercial labs, but this tells you if there is a deficiency of niacin itself. It does not indicate the levels of niacin metabolites like 4PY that result when excess niacin breaks down. See, these metabolites are newly on experts' radars and complex specialized testing is still required for their detection. 
So the takeaway is while high 4PY is emerging as a potential cardiovascular risk factor with niacin supplementation, accessible clinical testing for individual levels remains limited at this time as the methodology still resides in research settings. So this may hopefully evolve if 4PY proves to be a substantial risk factor worth wider clinical monitoring.